Hello, this is Grandma's Gone Gaming. I'm bringing you episode one of the Minecraft Hardcore Challenge for February 2017 by Michael Deering. This one is called Ice Plains Survival, and that's what it is, except it's not survival, it's hardcore. <laughs> okay, the seed for it is 2153. We need the structures off, and we need to have large biomes, and then we can go right in. Now, it's pretty simple. Standard rules, no eating meat, all that kind of stuff. Okay, we are at, let's do this, make sure that I know where I'm spawned here, and that is at 2, 64, 16, and this is MHC February 2017. Okay, then, um, wood. Okay, we have to uh, not leave the biome, and we have to um, do all of our permanent structures right here at spawn, right in this area somewhere here. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and get the rest of these, I think. And make some basics before I go looking for some more wood, because probably... Oh, hey, look, polar bears. A polar bear? Two polar bears, I think. Yeah, oh, polar bear and a baby. So I want to be a little bit careful of that. I don't want that down there. Silly, silly. Polar bears and strays. That should be real interesting to deal with. We won't be having any igloos because um, the uh, structures are off. So that's kind of a shame. I like the igloos. But that's all right. Let's see... We're going to make, I think I'll just go ahead and make that and go ahead and get myself some stone things right away here. Hopefully this looks interesting. What is, okay, there's more trees that way. Don't know what's that way, but um, oh, cool. All right, I'm gonna say there's an overhang and uh, it's a safe place to be and can plant inside of there. Um, but yeah, cool, right away. Okay, let's, uh, in fact, go in there and get down in the water and go ahead and get the coal and get some stone. Then I can go ahead and just set my crafting table up in here. Now, I don't know that I want this to be permanent, but it is at uh, spawn. And I can just make this my home here, I guess. Um, but, you know, survive and thrive. I think probably we want to uh, build um, a structure in which to live. And maybe I could just build my own igloo. Make a fancy one. Maybe a double story one or something like that. I wish I could play the game and read to you the... Uh, story article that I've written. It's a, uh, I wrote it years ago uh, for uh, about Alaska. Wrote it af several years after leaving Alaska with uh, my own with my little kids, uh, bringing them down to uh, uh, first to Washington and then down into California, um, where we lived for quite a while. Uh, it would be uh, nice if I could read the story. It's called Alaska: All the Colors of White. And I think you might enjoy it. Um, I thought about possibly, uh, you know, just playing and uh, reading the story, um, you know, dubbing it over. But I don't know, it would be kind of hard to fit in all the way, I think. It's not very long, but it talks about the variety of colors that are actually found in an Alaskan setting. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people think that it's just all white that you're there and it's cold and it's dark, <laughs> and it is a lot of the times, and that it's just snow and ice and all that kind of stuff, but it's much more than that. Alaska, I think nowadays probably most people know more about it um, than that. Um, when I was growing up, people really didn't. Uh, and uh, my family, my mom and uh, dad both were born here in South Dakota in Aberdeen, which is about 100 miles from here. Uh, we did 
when David and I first moved here, after he after um, the place where he had been working for um, about 17 years, <laughs> um, had uh, shut down due to really hard times, and he lost his job. He did get a small pension, which has helped, but um, and then he went to school and learned some other things and began working here. Let's see. Now we need to do some real tools here. Okay. Now. When uh, when I uh, was young, in fifth grade, we went to uh, Aberdeen and stayed with my mom for a while. My, my mom and dad were having some problems, and uh, she had basically said, Frank, when you straighten up, get your ways straightened around, um, and stop your drinking, and, you know, just getting in trouble all the time, I'll come home. She didn't say she was leaving him forever. She said, I'll come home. And... We were there, oh, three or four months, I think it was, and we went to school. And <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, let's see, what do I want to make here? I already have the furnace, that's what I want. I want a few torches, just a little bit at least. And then we're going to get out of here and go find some more wood. Yeah, yeah, good. We're, so... We went to, uh, the other kids and I went to the uh, same elementary school that my mom went to when she was little. Now my sister Cindy was only two. And uh, my uh, younger brother, uh, Gary, and I, I was in fifth grade, he was in fourth grade. And, um, you know, we were we were far ahead, actually, of... Okay, I'm going to have to use wood. Okay. We were far ahead. The Alaska schools um, at that time, and as far as I know, still are quite uh, quite a bit more astringent and a little more advanced than um, a lot of the other state schools. So we, uh, we did well in school. We didn't have to worry about that until we went back and... Uh, Fell, had fallen slightly behind um, and we had to scramble to catch up the rest of that school year. I'd say that's where I want to go back over that way now, right? Uh, I need to go to two, so it's this way, yeah. All right. Anyway, one of the things that we were always asked when uh, we were in school was, because they knew we came from Alaska, was, uh, did you live in an igloo? And so we would... Uh, say, actually, yes, we do. And they would say, really? And you built it out of snow and ice. And we'd go, nope, we built it out of wood. And they go, well, that's not an igloo. That's a house. And we said, yes, that's what the word uh, igloo means in uh, uh, Eskimo, which now you would say in Inuit, I believe it is. Uh, when I was growing up, it was just Eskimo. And uh, that's the Eskimo word for house. That's all it means. And yes, it was a different kind of a house than uh, what uh, most of my f friends there uh, lived in or had ever heard of before or ever seen. There's my place over there. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we explained to them exactly what it was, uh, how things were different, and, and uh, you know, invited a lot of them to come and see us someday and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was pretty good. We didn't... Uh, we, well, we had friends. Some of them we had actually met before because we had visited my grandparents before. And so, you know, we knew some of the, the children. And, uh, um, and Aberdeen's not a very big town. It's bigger now, but it wasn't then. Uh, and the weather there was very similar because it can get colder here in South Dakota many times than it is in Valdez, Alaska. Valdez is a very temperate place. That's the only ice-free port. And uh, that's why the uh, pipeline was sent there, so that it could be um, accessed more easily, uh, more constantly. <laughs> so, and without having to worry about uh, freezing stuff, you know, oil freezing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, in the fifth grade, we, my teacher and I got along just, you know, pretty well. She was pleased, and, you know, our teachers were all pleased with, with our progress to that point and, you know, pleased that uh, they had somebody that helped the other students and stuff like that. 
So, but one day we had an art lesson, and uh, I, she said, I want you to draw uh, trees, mountains, and a home. And so I drew um, scrub spruce trees. And I've always actually been uh, an artist. I have drawn things for a very long time, including some portraits. And uh, I really have enjoyed painting over the years. And uh, art is one of my favorite things, along with music. So um, I drew what I was used to seeing. And my mountains had high peaks and snow-capped uh, tips. And I got in trouble. And I only got two seeds out of that. I need a few more seeds. Hopefully. Come on. There we go. There's a couple more. At least three. That's good. I think we got that now. Yeah, we have five. Okay. And she, you know, it's not, I didn't get in trouble, trouble. I mean, she didn't ball me out and all that kind of stuff. But what she did was say, no, that, that's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to just draw, you know, um, the uh, trees and the mountains and, uh, you know, just a plain, simple home. Well, I had drawn um, a home with a, a lean-to on it um, that I was used to seeing. As we called it a wanigan. <laughs> That's another Eskimo word. It means a lean-to. <laughs> a little room added on, basically. So... Um, and she said, your trees have points and your mountains have points. And that's not how trees and mountains look. You know, we need you to draw uh, realistic trees and mountains. And I cried. It was like, those are the trees and mountains that I've seen all my life. And she said, no, honey, that, that's not true. That's not how trees and mountains look. Obviously, she had lived in South Dakota all her life with deciduous trees. She had never, there, there are. There are plenty of evergreen trees in South Dakota, but somehow she had never seen them. Uh, and our trees here, granted, are uh, not scrub spruce trees. <laughs> they are uh, probably, oh, I don't even know what they are around here. And they're bushy. They're shorter and they're bushy. <laughs> they're definitely not the scrub spruce that I grow up with. And if you don't know what those are, um, have a look online. Google it and look for scrub spruce or just spruce or um, even blue spruce, you'll see the spruce trees are a little pointier. And if you look up the mountains in Alaska, uh, you'll see why I drew what I drew. <laughs> Living in Valdez, we, uh, we had, uh, um, we were surrounded by some of the, the world's tallest mountains. Really, I mean, not the tallest mountain or anything like that, but, um, you know, I've seen Denali, not up close. It was called Mount McKinley, of course, when I was living there, but, uh, yeah, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it from afar, and I've seen it from the air, flying over it, and it is majestic. It really is truly majestic. Uh, but the mountains around Valdez, uh, we have one there that's called Mile High, and that is a pretty high mountain uh, for such a little place. Um, the, the town has, um, oh hey, coal right there too. There are glaciers all around. Uh, there is one off to the, let's see, it would be the east, we're looking, would be the west <laughs> of the town. And then there is one out in the bay, uh, which is out pretty much to the north. And I'm not sure, northwest of... Uh, Columbia Glacier, anyway. You go out into the sound, and you'll find it there. And then there is a mount, uh, um, a glacier up in the pass, uh, up in Thompson Pass, about, I think, 25 miles out. Not quite sure exactly where the glacier is. And I'm trying to think what the name of the glacier is. Um, can't remember right offhand. It used to be fairly large. came right down to the highway, and in the... Uh, in the uh, um, summers, we would go up there, drive up there to the verge, and Daddy would take a couple of big boxes with um, hay or even just, you know, uh, newspapers, um, something to um, wrap, wrap the ice in and always wear gloves. But the ice is so cold. It's blue ice off the glaciers, 
and it is just so cold you cannot touch it and you know not frostbite your hands you just um, if you if you do you don't want to touch it very long it's just is just so cold you know I think I'm gonna save that andesite and uh, and build with it so I won't fill that in I'll just go on over here but I do want to get my farm started here pretty quick um, so we would use the ice then we had an old chest freezer that somebody had given us that we didn't have electricity at the time at all and so we put that old chest freezer it was out right out in front of uh, where our little kitchen was and uh, daddy would go get that ice and, and we get to go and we'd always have a picnic up that way and go see some of the other beautiful sights up there in the past it is a just a glorious place to go and look the colors up there those are some of the colors that I have told about in that article um, if anybody any of you would actually like to read it I could if you'd give me your email address um, in a message then I could uh, um, send you a PDF copy of it oops wrong thing there we go so uh, anyway uh, we would uh, go up and look at things and bring that ice back down and like I said the colors up there there is a place up there called blueberry lake it is one of the most beautiful lake settings that I've ever seen anywhere and I've been to quite a few different states have not been out of the United States except to Hawaii um, and then, of course it, it is a state but um, any place out of the uh, uh, the main United States and the and the uh, and Alaska except for Hawaii uh, what do I want to make a couple of these here we go and um, the lake up there has got you oh my goodness there are blueberries on the ground the low blue bush blueberries they, they kind of crawl along the ground they're they're a, uh, a ground cover and then there are uh, oh shoot I'm gonna get one of those and I gotta make more sticks then there are the crowberries and no they don't fly but they are black the color of the of the crows the ravens mostly have ravens up there you do have a few crows but the ravens are so huge it's like crows on on uh, steroids I guess <laughs> huge if you haven't seen a good picture of a a, um, a raven uh, my brother Gary who takes lovely photographs uh, just recently you look for Gary Minish uh, on Facebook and look at his photos he has a lot of photos that he has taken in recent years up there in Valdez and uh, just a couple of weeks ago he did one uh, with the uh, showing the uh, beautiful different colors that are in the raven it's not just black and he, it's a beautiful raven one of the prettiest I've ever seen because a lot of them are um, mangled and you know I mean they're it's a tough life <laughs> so I think I'm gonna leave that one there for the moment anyway and I'll fix that later I don't want to leave it open when things may be wanting to drop in on me from here so yeah um, the colors up there and then in the fall oh my goodness the fall in Alaska is so gorgeous the colors are so bright oh hey I think I got enough to make a fishing pole that is wonderful I do believe I'll make one of those right away and get myself some real food come on up here we go all right this way I can see what's coming at me let's see we have three sticks and two string look at that first night in with a fishing pole woohoo and water in which to fish okay so yeah and, and I painted a picture um, one of the uh, wet on wet pictures that I painted some years back that uh, is very much like Blueberry Lake um, and really enjoyed painting it and, and putting the different colors of the of the uh, the mat of floral a uh, flora I guess you would just say <clears throat> around the lake it's bushy and springy and you walk on it and it's like uh, walking on thick heavy carpet it is so spongy and soft 
And we would take our blankets in the summer and have picnics. You know, put them out there on that. It would be all nice and soft, and you could just sit and relax. Just really, really enjoy having picnics out there. Oh, it looks like we have daylight. Um, yeah, look at there. All right, so I'm going to, I think, get... Uh, um, I did get a raw, a raw fish, so I'll be able to eat fish. I'll go ahead and get uh, one more here and see what I can do with that. And then it'll be time for episode two. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my story that I wrote. Come on, give me something else. Ready? Anytime now. And one of the things that we uh, would do there would, would be to go fishing. So I'll tell you a little bit about that too. The kind of fish that we could catch. A little bit different than you catch in a lot of other places. Ready? Come on. There we go. Ready, ready. And another fish. Hooray. Okay, we have a little bit of coal. That's great. We'll go ahead and cook those up. And that's the end of episode one. And I'll come back with episode two. We'll get a little further into this thriving and surviving thing on the ice plains. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. And bye for now.